Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to go over the topic of how to pick up your IFR clearance. When you fly IFR, you have to file an IFR flight plan, and you have to pick up that clearance and get released on it before you actually fly the flight. In this video, I'm going to talk about those steps and who to reach out for to pick up the IFR clearance uh, using the acronym CRAFT for copying down that clearance and reading it back, and then the next step in actually getting released for the clearance and reaching out to ATC once you're airborne. So follow along in this video. And if you have any interest in subscribing to this channel, we'd much appreciate it. So just click the like button and subscribe to the channel so that you get notified when I come out with my next video. All right, let's get into this. How to pick up an IFR clearance. First, we got to think about picking up our IFR flight plan that we filed. Um, when we plan to fly IFR, we need to file an IFR flight plan. And we're going to typically do this through flight, a flight service station. Uh, we can call 1-800-WX-BRIEF. Uh, we might be able to file it through ForeFlight if we've got that tool or some electronic flight bag. Um, but one way or other, we've got to um, submit an IFR flight plan that we plan to file. Otherwise, we can't pick up an IFR flight plan. When we're ready to pick up our IFR clearance, depending on the airport, we can ask to pick it up via a variety of options. If we're at a towered airport, we can just radio ground or clearance delivery at that airport uh, to pick up the IFR clearance. If we're at a non-towered airport, we can radio or call possibly via phone um, to pick up that IFR flight plan. Uh, we can do that by calling clearance delivery, the clearance delivery frequency or phone number that may be available. Um, the, often there's a clearance delivery frequency with a radio communications outlet that allows us to basically get to, let's say, a Boston um, clearance. Or we can possibly use a ground communications outlet frequency that might have be associated with a voice-only, receive-only frequency using a VOR nearby. Um, we can also try to reach out to approach control. Um, we can also reach out direct to uh, center, air, air route traffic control center. Um, and in some cases, we can even go as far as look to get a relay clearance by contacting aircraft flying overhead to relay our clearance request and for them to basically um, relay back to us the, the release. When we reach out to pick up the IFR clearance, we want to say something like Boston Clearance 405 Sierra Bravo at Laconia with a request to pick up our IFR clearance to Keene. When we make that request, we want to make sure we can, uh, are ready to copy the clearance. So on paper and pen ready, or we want to have our scratch pad out open in four flight uh, so that we can copy down the, the clearance that they're about to give us. Usually they'll ask us, are you ready to copy? And we hopefully will say, yes, ready to copy. So once we're ready to copy, they're going to give us the clearance. And we want to write down on our scratch pad of paper or scratch pad in four flight or something, the acronym CRAF, uh, just to kind of in a vertical way. So what they're going to do is they say, um, you're going to be clear to destination airport or to some fix and route to that airport. Uh, they're going to give you the route. This is going to be the path that you're going to fly to the destination airport, usually through a combination of radar vectors to a VOR, uh, to some Victor Airways or T routes. They'll give you an initial altitude assignment. Often they'll give you a little bit more and say expect the second higher altitude 10 minutes after that release. Um, they'll give you a frequency. This is the ATC frequency that you plan to reach out to or you're required to reach out to once airborne. And they give you a squawk code for the transponder. Once you've copied that clearance down, you're going to read it back to them. And you're going to wait for a response. If you've copied the clearance down correctly, they'll say read back correct, 405 Sierra Bravo. If you didn't, they will state the needed correction, and you'll read back the fully amended clearance and now that you've hopefully made the fix, and wait for them to hopefully come back to this time and say read back correct, 405 Sierra Bravo. Uh, then for non-towered airports, clearance delivery will state hold for release and to let us know when you are number one for departure. Once we've completed our run-up and have entered the flight plan into our avionics, our GPS system, for example, we will text to the runway we plan to depart from. Holding for IFR clearance release. So we got our clearance, but we didn't get released yet. So once we get down to the uh, runway, we're holding short, number one for departure, we'll contact clearance delivery again and say, hey, 405 Sierra Bravo, holding short of runway 26 in Laconia, ready for release. Clearance delivery will, delivery will come back and say something like, 405 Sierra Bravo, hold for release. We might hold for just a minute, we might hold for 20 minutes. Or they'll come back, hopefully, and say, 405 Sierra Bravo, you are released, clearance void if not off the ground in five minutes. 
We're going to respond back, release, clearance void if not off the ground in five minutes, 405 Sierra Bravo. At that point, we switch back to the Laconia CTAF and announce our departure on runway 26. When we are airborne and outside of the local traffic pattern, we will switch the ATC frequency assigned to us for our clearance and contact them reporting our altitude. After flying out on an obstacle departure procedure, if there is one for that airport, or a standard IFR departure, a SID that we might have been assigned to when we got our clearance, we'll proceed on course per the route ATC assigned to us or any potential vectors they may have gave to us when we reached out to them uh, with the initial contact to ATC. One of the nice advantages of ForeFlight is that they've got a scratch pad with some default settings or default pages. One of them is scratch pad uh, for craft, and we can take advantage of that for picking up our IFR clearance. So if we reached out to clearance delivery and asked for our IFR flight plan to pick up, it would sound something similar to this. 405 Sierra Bravo, you're cleared as filed to Keene. Altitude is 5,000 feet. Frequency 134.75, squawk 5012. So we'd come back to them and say, we're cleared as filed to Keene, 5,000 feet, 134.75, uh, squawk 5012. And they'd come back, say your readback is correct. Uh, hold for release, let us know when you're number one for departure. And that's all there would be to picking up that IFR clearance. Now we can Go ahead and enter it into our, our GPS or avionics, um, do a run-up, and get ready to taxi down for departure. So that's what's involved in picking up an IFR clearance, uh, getting released, and actually going out and starting to fly that flight. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, consider it in the like button and subscribing to the channel so you get notified on my next video.